Good afternoon. Welcome to our Thursday Live. I hope you've had the most amazing week so far. Today we are going to focus on antique brown glaze, the uses thereof, the versatility thereof. And then I'm going to um, also remove any, any uncertainty so that you can see how easy it is to work with, how easy it is to make changes and alterations. So our glazes, and today we'll only focus on antique glaze. To make it clear, next week we'll focus on the clear glaze so that, we, so that we make sure everything is clear and you understand what to do. So all our glazes, both the antique brown glaze as well as our clear glaze, are both pure acrylic sealants. The only difference, and I'm going to pick this up, the only difference with the antique brown glaze, it is exactly what it says. It's an antique brown finish. So this, if you want a different finish, you will use something different. And that we'll discuss on our next se session. What we are going to do today is to share how to use this and how easy it is to work with. So it is a concentrated sealant. You will see on the packaging, on the lid, there are instructions. It also mentions, I've put it now in the basin behind me, it says, allow your surface to cure for at least four hours. Important. So what I usually do is I leave painted items overnight and glaze the next day. Then I know if the weather was horrible, it was cloudy, it was wet, my paint had enough time to cure and dry, although it feels dry quickly, there is a curing time, and then my antique application is done with great success. Very important, remember the cleaning part. On items like melamine kitchen cupboard doors, previously varnished surfaces, if the varnish surfaces are older than six months, don't paint onto varnish that has been recently varnished. It won't be a success with nothing. Varnish takes a time to cure. But on everything like glass, um, wall tiles, clean well with lacquer thinners, that step is so important for everything else to be a success. Then you let the thinners evaporate dry, takes more or less 40 minutes, and then you start painting. Once your paintwork is complete, leave overnight to be safe, or four hours if you live in the sunny Limpopo or Mapumalanga, but I believe it's now also wet there, and gloomy like here, we've had rain non-stop in Hating. Um, we have puddles to swim in, that's deep enough. Wait overnight and start your glazing process the next day. I'm going to explain first washing with the antique brown glaze because I think sometimes you think you paint it on and everything is brown and your paintwork is completely a disaster. That's not the use for the antique brown glaze. Then you will paint it with a brown color. The antique brown glaze is to slowly but surely add depth, add character to your surface. So what I'm going to do, first of all, you stir. My paint is, has cured. I stir my antique brown glaze. And I'm showing these steps, not because, remember with chalk or you can, cleaning is very important, allowing to dry is very important, but when it comes to techniques, we are so free to play around. And that's the lovely thing about chalk. I'm going to mix it in here. So that you can see, so if you want to mix, it is concentrated. That's the reason why I'm going to add water. So it's three parts, antique brown glaze. And this, I, it's my kitchen utensils or measuring cups. I will just wash them in water afterwards. Everything is water-based, non-toxic. One part, cooled boiling water. The reason I'm using cooled boiling water is to make sure if everything is left over, I can put it back in my jar and my tap water won't contaminate the, the content. So what the water does, it just prolongs the drying time, that nothing dries too quickly. And due to the fact that it's a concentrated, in concentrated form, we add the water, we don't want to do it at the factory because then the chances are that contamination can take place. Now we can, if you have something bigger like an ice cream tub that can work well, I'm going to use a paintbrush. 
and I'm go I have a damp piece of mutton cloth and this is the size of my mutton cl cloth it's more or less someone said something about mutton cloth last week what was it I can't remember um, it's more or less the size of an A4 piece of paper I've cut it I've dipped it in water and I've squeezed out any excess water but it is rather too damp than too dry because the dampness allows the spread of your antique brown glaze so make sure it's done evenly nicely and you can manipulate what you're doing now I'm going to take this antique brown mix I haven't added anything else because this is just for a wash effect I will share a secret, secret ingredient later with you if we want to add more contrast to embellishments or a previously stencil of Paris surface but for washing you can just do this and now remember if you want any other color than an antique finish a different technique will be applied and that we will discuss later okay so now I wipe my antique brown glaze into my damp cloth and I'm just going to clean my surface sorry it's just the frills of the cloth that came loose because I've cut it can you see my cloth there's no solid piece of antique lace it's evenly it's actually a dirty cloth and that's what I'm going to work with now I fold my cloth I fold all the loose ends away and I put my cloth like a ball in the palm of my hand and with my free hand I press it flat the flatter it is the more even the distribution will be I'm just cleaning my surface and now I'm going to start to wash so very evenly and slowly I move my cloth over my surface and at no time are you feeling anxious or worried because I'm going to show you how to hide in any imperfections and I wash my surface and I press lightly I can rather at a later stage add more browniness and more of an antique finish to my surface so you can decide do you want to move in a circle direction in a straight direction I'm just spreading it onto my surface washing my surface okay, and I'm going to stop here you can see the circular movements which are perfectly fine the drier your cloth the less that will be visible okay and I'm going to wait I'm going to give it a minute to dry while I give it a minute to dry I have a next damp cloth and what I do is if I want to hide any perfections I dip two fingers into my original color which is gracious goodness gracious are our two um, pastel greens and I do the same I'm working with dirty cloths and this is a technique it's not painting a surface and one two three you are done it's playing it's having fun it's experimenting so I am dirtying my cloth, two more fingers. Okay, while this is still drying, I'm going to continue. Now you can decide if you want to, and we are going to play on this so that you can see what happens. If you want more of a brown effect, you will wait like I'm waiting now and apply another coat. Or if you want that subtle 
subtle antique finish you will stop here and then add your original color again this is still wet I can see it it's raining so everything takes longer to dry so I'm just going to have patience and I'll continue with that in a moment here I have an embellishment so on this kitchen door I want to add an embellishment how am I going to do it I paint my embellishment in the same color as my the color I've selected for my kitchen you want the embellishment to flow with what you are doing it, it's not an item that needs to stand out it's a, it's an item that needs to blend in with your surface so I've also painted Suzuki has painted it in gracious as well and now what I want to do and this is the secret ingredient because I'm going to show you both one without adding the secret ingredient so that you can see the difference and one um, where I've added the secret ingredient so let's start without so if it's just your glaze and water mix the best tool to use on embellishments is an artist brush um, always feel your brushes the softer the bristles the more even the distribution will be it's like an artist an artist will select the best possible brushes because that defines the quality of the art piece so I've dipped my brush in my antique brown glaze I have a damp cloth available here it's clean I'm not going to use the green side there's a cleaner side and small areas at a time I paint now remember for any other looks and feels we'll do different techniques and very lightly after I've painted very lightly I'll start wiping away add more in the groove so work small areas at a time that your glaze doesn't dry on you while you're still busy what do you do if the glaze does dry and you didn't wipe away soon enough you simply paint on top of it again everything is water-based and that's the loveliness is the fact that you have the freedom to play around nothing is ever a disaster painting should be joy it should be something fun that you do and rewarding to know that it's actually something that you have created so I work small areas at a time this brush paints so lovely once you start you don't want to stop take my damp cloth and gently wipe it's almost no pressure on my surface to hide any imperfections you just brush with your original color um, over the antique glaze and I just continue okay so I think dip it in my jar and I small sections and wipe away let me show you what I mean by hiding anything or let's give this time to dry then I'll show you what dry brushing is and how to hide imperfections on an embellishment I want to show you I have removed too much here so what do I do I simply paint on again and I make sure I love it okay so that's without adding a secret ingredient say for instance you want a more dramatic feel to your embellishments and even on a surface where you have applied your stencil of Paris we are going my my grandmother had a had a recipe for milk tarts to this day I could not perfect it because she had that special ingredient which she never shared I'm going to share mine with you it's matte black so I'm just adding and you can add a third but I'm just going to play you can add a third so the same amount of water you've added you can add matte black as well but I first want to test 
if it's dark enough before I add too much. And that is the joy of it. You can play around. So I am just going to put this brush over there. I can see it is still too light. So I'm going to add a little bit more. And that's more or less, trust me, a third. So it's the same amount of water I've added to my antique brown glaze. And immediately you will feel the consistency is thicker and the color is darker. Okay, so a third. So three parts glaze, one part water, one part matte black. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this side so, you can, so that you can see the difference. So immediately you can see a darker, more dramatic, and you can manipulate if you feel I want even a, a darker look. You can add even more. My damp cloth, still folded like a ball. Let me just hide all the loose ends and gently wipe. We have a question from Siloni Brutus. As jy a ice kas verf en jy wil daarop skryf, moet jy kan a glaze opwerf? So if whether you've applied our glaze or not, your surface is a chalkboard surface. The only thing the glaze does, Salome as it is van Namibia, hello. Um, the only thing the glaze does, a glaze is definitely something I would apply to a fridge because it makes it more stain resistant, it makes it easier to wipe. Just remember on darker colors, you dilute your clear glaze with half glaze, half water. So equal amounts glaze, equal amounts water. And then you still use it as a chalkboard paint. The glaze just makes it easier to clean and more stain resistant. And there you can see a more of a dramatic look and feel. And this is what I like. And in the grooves, that's especially where it sits and makes it beautiful. Can you see how beautiful that is? It looks aged. If you compare the two, this is more of a brown look, lighter, subtle, and this is more drama. So if I want to um, make any I just want to continue quickly because this is so beautiful. It's therapeutic. I just want to show you, I just want to create a larger surface to show how you can change things. So I'm working quickly, just bear with me. Okay, so we are going to glaze this side darker. Quickly wipe. And I want to show you dry brush. So if you want to change something. Okay. So if you feel you want to manipulate something, hide imperfections, hide something that you don't like, you can use a normal paintbrush, normal paintbrush, like a fiberglass brush. Let me show you. So this is a normal paintbrush. This will do exactly the same. Let me show. So you dip your paintbrush, only the bristles, the, the, edge, the edge of your brush in the paint. Then what you do is you remove any excess. I'm going to use my spot sheet. I remove excess, so I make it as dry as possible. I you always use my hand as an indicator to know when my brush is dry enough. And if you st see streak marks like this, you know you're good to go for a dry brush technique. And what I'll do is I'll just, it will create a subtle change. It won't be a huge change, but subtly you will hide any imperfections. I will just brush over my embellishment. And this actually just gives you the feel and the impression that this wasn't done, um, the glaze wasn't done just on top of something to give an effect. Everything now forms a, it's like a, a unity. How beautiful is that? 
stunning, beautiful, it blends in beautiful. And that is dry brush to hide imperfections, but also to finish off your embellishment beautifully. Remember, you can also use more than one color. So you can play around with various colors, but the techniques will remain the same. Do we have a question? That was exactly what you just said. Now, can we add any color to antique? Oh, I read your mind. <laughs> okay, so here is my previously an, um, antiqued flatter surface. So now exactly, I'll do the same, hard imperfections, but the way I hide imperfections on a flat surface is by washing with a cloth. So and then we have a question. Yeah. Um, can you glaze of hout gebruik sonder om a laag te ver? It will stain your wood. We use it on cladding um, pallet woods. Definitely you can use it. Oh, I somehow get excited. Yeah, you can do it. So what we've done in our factory, it was a post on our main Facebook page quite recently, good question, is we had a coffee station where the cladding at the back was different shades. And one of those shades were just antique lace in a cloth. But what you do on raw timber is you wet the timber first so that the antique lace gets absorbed evenly into your wood. And then you have you, you stain your wood with the antique lace. Very good question. Thanks for asking. So what I'm going to do now is I just make sure as with the antique lace previously, I blend in my paint into my damp cloth. Another question. Mm -hmm. Nadine, can you please advise do you have console bottles for antique lace? Oh, that's a good question. I don't have them here, but what I can do, will you make a mental note, Crystal? Yeah. Then we show next week. Okay, we'll definitely show. So what I do now is I wipe, and you can see how the colors are changing my paint onto my surface. The hair I'm losing um, has nothing nothing to do with yak. Moet jy jou antiek brown glaze oor seal nadat jy dit gebruik het? No, it is a sealant. So no need to seal it whatsoever. So here you can see the change it creates. It looks old, it looks used, it creates effect. And it's just something that you fall in love with. The main thing is not to be afraid to play around. I will most probably How beautiful is that? Stunning, stunning, stunning. I will most probably wait for my paint to dry again first um, and then apply more antique brown glaze and just age it even more. So as you can see, it's not painting solid antique brown glaze on a surface. That's going to be a huge disaster if you want to create more of a, here we have another side, more of a lime wash effect where you can see, where you can see the, look at this. We don't move in circular movements, but you move, and this is beautiful on a farm style kitchen with those grooves, where you move in an up and down direction. And then also, when you repeat your paint on top to hide any darker shades, lighter shades, you also move up and down. So lovely for a tabletop. Lovely, lovely, lovely. A tabletop though is a surface that I will apply a solid coat of clear glaze on afterwards. Because my antique glaze is done so smooth, so thinly actually, it's a very thin coat. It just creates um, effect. And once again, you can use various colors. Make sure you don't stop, but you actually move um, from the surface. 
And now I'll wait for this to dry. Lovely effect for um, farm style kitchens, especially if you have those kitchen doors with the grooves. And then what you do afterwards, after you've done this, you do exactly the same technique as I've done on the embellishment. Paint in those grooves and wipe away with your damp cloth. Now what I will do next is I will stick, let's do the other side, I will stick my embellishment onto my distressed antiqued surface. I like to use um, super glue, but the gel one, purely because with a gel, you have more time to move the embellishment into position. Something that I would do is I would measure precisely that my embellishment is precisely how I want it. Make more small pencil marks that you know you put it precisely into, into position. The pencil marks won't be in the way. I'll show you how we're going to hide it before you stick it. Um, a level in a kitchen, make sure all your embellishments are in line. We have a question. Yeah. Um, I have lost it. Hold on. Uh, someone just wants, uh, Danielle wants to know, is that antique brown glaze that you just wiped on? Yes, it was. And then, hello, can I do it on a gerusa eister table? Absolutely. But if you do it on a rusted table, you will still have a rust effect. So what it will do in certain areas where the oxidation happened more, it will actually absorb the antique gla glaze on other areas less. So you will add to paint a surface first. You first use something like a rust converter, that is if you don't want to see the rust. Rust converter, and then you follow the instructions on the product, and um, then only chalk or it, and then the, the, the rust can't grow, or the oxidation on that surface can't, can't occur any longer. Okay, so my embellishment is now on my surface. What I'm going to do next, I'm now going to start to distress these areas and it's completely up to you. I just want to share ideas and then you can play around and decide what you like. But this is something I prefer to do. Then the embellishment looks more as if it's part of the surface and not something that you accidentally stuck onto your surface at a later stage. So I take an artist brush once again, only smaller, and I wipe only the edge can you see there? So I paint only the edge where my embellishment and my paint meets. Can you see my paint is still wet? It's purely because I haven't allowed it to dry enough. So you will allow enough drying time, at least 40 minutes. And if it's raining and wet as today, even wait longer. How will I fix this? I will wait until it's dry and I will just wipe some antique glaze on again. But let me show you this so that it makes sense. So in that area, I apply my antique glaze, and with my damp cloth, Crystal, can you, can it help, uh, does it help? I just wipe away. I am doing everything very fast, so you will definitely allow drying time in between your um, steps. Okay, and I'm just going to hide this. So it doesn't look that obvious. Just for now, it's not perfect. So paint and wipe. Okay, now to move on. And then your embellishment, I will send her after when this is done and there's drying time allowed. Then your embellishment has got a thin shadow around the edges and it looks beautiful and look, it looks like an imprint. What I'm going to do on these boards is when I work with Stencil of Paris. So first of all, you Stencil of Paris and we've done that in a previous session. If you have not seen it or you've missed it, please go watch our YouTube channel, it is there. The description is how to use Stencil of Paris. So the Stencil of Paris is a product like, like this. You secure your stencil with masking tape. This is what we've used here. 
and you spread your stencil of Paris with an applicator. I'll quickly show so that everything makes sense for those that are new and doesn't know the steps. So stencil of Paris, I'm not going to secure my stencil, but you do it and the stencil can't move. And you spread your stencil of Paris onto your surface with something like a paint scraper, even an old credit card works well. Make sure you do it nicely, evenly. And after you've done this, you are going to allow the stencil of Paris to dry for in between two to three hours. Once again, the thickness of the application and also the weather plays a part in the drying time. Okay, so we say two to three hours, then you should be good, unless you've done it really thick and it takes much longer to dry. You will feel with your fingernail. If you can't press in it anymore, it is set. Um, it grips to wall tiles, it grips to any flat surface. It's actually best to use on a flat surface, but we've been so creative with Stencil of Paris, you need to go watch our YouTube channel to see everything that we've done with it. Yaka wants to know, where is his credit card? <laughs> I have it. Oh, I have it. I have your credit We're card, Yaku. And stencil. you, I think you would feel safer, Yaku, if you knew I used it for Stencil of Paris. Um, <laughs> Okay, so now my stencil I have removed from the one side to the other. Sorry, I've done it now so quickly when I heard that his credit card is still in my purse. <laughs> and you are going to allow this to dry, wash your stencil immediately in water and then you can reuse it. Once it is dry, this is what it looks like when it's dry. You take your choco paint, a brush that I love using, this is not a new one, this is a used one. But once again, you can feel the bristles. It's an enzyme brush, part of the Hamilton's range, also something that we um, stock, but it's got beautiful soft bristles. I am going to use Lebos Light, and I am painting over my stencil and onto my super wood. No primer is needed with my Lebos Light. Gaily. Okay, Maestro opened the door for himself. He sorted. Okay, so the entire board painted. Wait your 40 minutes. Apply your second coat. Wait overnight. Okay, that's what I'm going to do now. And good morning. It's Friday. Here's one that magic. has magic. Um, <laughs> So here's one that we've done earlier today. And now, this is a surface now with edges, grooves, flat areas, and I'm going to use my choco and teak brown glaze mix on my stencil of Paris surface, purely because you need to wipe away. So you want the darker version of the antique brown glaze where we've mixed a third of the matte black in as well to actually create more dramatic effect and you can wash over it again. I'm going to do everything so that it makes sense. I am going to take a brush. Let me just get one here from the back. Sorry, Crystal. I've now used all of them. So here's a brush fiber brush this is not for painting it's still a very good quality brush and once again when I'm done with my antique brown glaze there's my antique brown brush crystal I will wash all my brushes immediately in water both with the paint and the antique brown glaze if you wait too long to wash your brushes and the paint starts to dry then you struggle to clean it but if you wash it in water immediately it's ready for your next use. Now what I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to work small sections. I just want to rinse out my cloth or get a cleaner one. So it's water, a damp microfiber, a mutton cloth. I'm still thinking damp, as someone said the damp cloth. That's what someone said, the lady with a cloth, that cloth. Okay, so it is a damp uh, mutton cloth. 
squeeze out the excess. Okay, so I'm squeezing out excess water. The wonder of a mutton cloth you can't explain, especially when it comes to paint techniques. Um, it's the best tool you can have with you other than a good quality brush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm generously going to paint my antique brown glaze onto my surface. If you are new in working with antique brown glaze, work small areas at a time. This area is big enough to play and feel at ease. So there's a generous amount of antique brown glaze on the surface. Does it look beautiful? If you said yes, lovely. Okay, now cloth is like a ball in the palm of my hand. It is cloudy, so I'm just giving it a minute, maybe just a few seconds. So it can just actually sit onto the surface before I just start wiping away everything. And I wipe very softly, evenly. This is now not a flat surface. It's a surface with some um, texture to it. That's the only time you paint the entire surface antique brown glaze and then start wiping away. If you want to use the antique brown glaze on a flat surface, it's the first step that we've done on that kitchen door where you put the antique glaze onto your cloth. And I promise you, I'm sure there are so many ladies that found other ways of doing it. And that's also fine. I'm just see me as inspiration and as a guide. And then you start playing and you find new ways of doing things. So as I feel my cloth is too dirty, I simply change it to a, to a cleaner side. And very gently, softly, softly, I wipe. So on the flatter areas, I will start to apply more pressure. This is a lovely cheese board, lovely on a furniture item, on doors, even on a wall, um, on a book, decor elements. Right, because says she wonders how many lappies can break in a month. <laughs> Hamiltons. Hamiltons, um, yeah, they sponsor me with lots of tools. So thank you, Hamiltons, for all the lovely tools I can work with. Yeah. And Yaku's credit card also <laughs> sometimes helps. <laughs> Is it Marijke van Wooster? Can you see? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh. So now I just start applying more pressure, but I want it to sit in all those grooves and edges. And this is playing. It's relaxing, having fun. The moment, and I'll show you how to fix anything. If you want to apply more antique brown glaze, you do it. If you want to see more color, lightness to your surface you do it so i'm applying more pressure just in all these areas this is actually being used tomorrow for our first book shoot we are at um Moikran's venue and garden tomorrow and we're doing the main bedroom as our first room for our book so we'll most probably send some behind the scenes Nee, Krista? It's a journey and everyone's part of it. Yeah. So I'm just moving my cloth over to a cleaner section again. Add more pressure. And I wipe away as much as I want. This is a complete, um, this is a personal, a personal decision. So you decide when you want to stop and when you feel happy. And play. That's the best way of learning a new technique is by trying it. 
And if you need advice, if you need help, that's why we're there, is to assist on your journey. So I just gently wipe it in one direction. And I'm working in the light, so it's difficult to see what you see. And I'll just make sure the edges are done properly as well. That's something I didn't pay attention to. But that's something that definitely needs to be done as well. Make sure that all over your creation is beautiful. We have a comment from Anton van Looyen. It's on Tower. It is Nikki Domus what Kai can wear me. Welcome, Anton. Anton, <laughs> you are our favorite viewer for the day. Okay, so when I want to change anything. Okay, so there my antique glazing is done. I can maybe wipe away more here. And now I'm going to stop. When I want to change anything, or just as on the embellishment, you just want to make sure that everything comes together. I will add some of my color again. I have labels light here. This recently became one of my favorite neutrals to use. It is a soft gray. It just complements any other color, any room. Um, on smaller surfaces, it looks actually lighter. I've recently painted the inside of house with our charcoal colors for walls in Labels Light, and it is so beautiful to use. So there's Labels Light on my cloth. My antique lace is not completely cured yet. Okay, so it's still wet, but I'm going to give it a go because I can. And what I do is very lightly, I'm going to wipe with my um, initial color on top of my antique lace. And I do that. So you can see the subtle changes, but everything just comes together. I just want to add a Wipe it in well. There was actually, I think, Davet on this board. Yes. Name, but I don't have Davet on my table. But that's the, you can use other colors as well. But look here, when I just wipe this over, how it changes, and it's completely up to you whether this is a step that you do want to attend or leave it as is. I like doing this. The edges get some definition and voila, we have something. So I will show on a glass jar the exact same thing that we've done right at the beginning. You take a dirty cloth and you wash onto something that is light. We have so many at the office, but I didn't even think of bringing one with. Um, so you paint your glass jar. Very important is to wait in between. Also clean your glass with lacquer thinners. Pay, wait for the lacquer thinners to dry properly. Paint your first coat and allow your first coat to dry properly. Second coat, and then also with your dirty cloth, you wash first. And then on the console piece, after your antique glaze has dried for 40 minutes, you take your artist brush like we've done on the embellishment. And it's now secured with um, super glue. Mm -hmm. The super glue worked. And you paint onto the console section, damp cloth and wipe away. But your antique glaze needs to be properly dry. Mine wasn't. And then you wipe it away again. So just make sure, give it 40 minutes and then wipe. Are there any questions? You've sort of covered everything as we went through it. There's one unrelated to what you did now. Helena would like to know what color is the cupboards underneath behind you? I have had so many questions. This is Sheriff Stone. Thank you for asking because I always answer this afterwards. It's Sheriff Stone that I've used on there in the um, in a recent in in a Toys Home article that's going to be published soon, we actually show in my kitchen how it was a shiny melamine that we've cleaned properly with lacquer thinners and painted with sheriff stone and a foam roller. Everything, okay. 
Let us know if there are any more questions, if you have any suggestions, but have the most creative, amazing week ahead. I hope all the farmers has received some rain, even in the Northern Cape. We really hope that you've also been blessed with wonderful rain. Um, yeah, see you next week. Stay creative and stay happy. Bye.